the divine souls will be chanting Doha number 12, starting with Doha number 12 of the Bhakti Shatak today. Jai Radhe Krishna Radhe 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 Krishna Radhe 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 Jai Radhe Jai
जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे 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 yesterday in the last doha that we covered we learned about vairagya detachment from the world i explained to you that this is a very important concept because it's the mind that has to be used in devotion and the same mind is attached in the world and full overflowing with all kinds of worldly defilements like anger and desires and hate and jealousy and all these things how will that mind attach itself to god so some people understanding the necessity of detaching the mind from the world in order to attach it to god they wonder that which comes first first we have to detach our mind and then we can attach it to god there are plenty of quotations that you can find in the scriptures that say if you could just remove all of your desires and attachments prashant chittay shaman vitay ved says just gain control over your mind remove all the attachments and desires you can have everything you want vihaya kamanya sarvan pumansh charati ni spriha nirmamo nirahankara sa shanti madhigachhati gita if someone can remove all of his desires then he attains divine happiness peace so people think okay i first i have to remove my desires then i can do devotion to god and other people say no well, how is that possible mind is looking for happiness how can it give up its desires give it something better then it will naturally release its grip on these worldly attachments so let me experience some devotion to god then my mind will naturally release these things but well, how can you experience devotion if you're not attaching your mind because it's already attached in the world so it's like this confounding problem we don't know which is supposed to come first hari anurag or jagavirag detachment from the world or love for god which is supposed to come first so here shri kripalu ji maharaj reconciles this confusion as well saying that neither comes first there's something else that comes first tatva gyan correct spiritual understanding just like yesterday i was explaining to you <clears throat> that we all want happiness that's a natural desire and we have two fields in which to seek that happiness maya and god that happiness is not just in god it is god and that happiness doesn't exist as a fact in this world and we understood the nature of the happiness and unhappiness we experience in this world is always the product of our own thinking it doesn't happiness and unhappiness don't exist in a person 
And that's why you're getting happiness from that person or unhappiness from that person. They don't exist in a thing and that's why that thing is making me happy. No, you're getting the happiness <clears throat> from that person or thing because of your own thinking towards it. Change your thinking, you won't, you'll stop getting happiness. Or unhappiness can become happiness. The whole thing can change. This is tattva gyan. That comes first, understanding the nature of worldly happiness and understanding the fact that true happiness is in God, not in the world, and you are eternally related to God. These are the main facts that we have to keep in our mind. Once we get this tattva gyan, the mind is automatically going to start diverting towards God. So neither virag nor anurag comes first. First comes correct knowledge. But where will that knowledge come from? So this is why in this Doha, Sri Maharaji says, Guru cha Tab hoga jab Guru charananam mana lag. When you get the association of a true saint, a guru to guide you in receiving this knowledge, <coughs> only then will you get correct understanding. Sadguru Vaidya Vachan Vishvasa Sanjamaya Navishayaki Asa Tulsidas Ji says that Guru is like a doctor who prescribes the remedy. In this case, the remedy is twofold. Get the correct knowledge and then practice sadhana bhakti in order to attach your mind to God and purify it. But only Guru can tell us this. So luckily we have the writings of Jagat Guru Shri Kripalu Ji Maharaj and we can learn from him, we can get this tattva gyan from him, which begins our process of simultaneously releasing the worldly attachments and building attachment in God. It all happens together. That's the first step, is gaining that knowledge, and only then our mind can gradually transfer its attachments. Barabar ka balance hai. See, jagavirag ho titnoi jitnoi haryanurag. So, however much your mind gets attached to Shri Krishna, that much it will detach from the world. So, if you're 10% attached in Shri Krishna, you'll still be 90% attached in the world. And that gradually transfers. You can actually think of it this way. Even though the tattva gyan that I told you you have to get in your mind in order to effect this change is so simple, yet if you only have 10% attachment in God and still 90% attachment in the world, it means you've only 10% understood that. <laughs> because it has to happen. If you understand, he's mine, really mine. And he's waiting for me with open arms. And he is divine happiness. You think if your mind truly accepted that, you wouldn't surrender to him in one second? It would happen instantly. So it means we don't even understand it. <laughs> we hear it. We understand the words. Or you could say we don't accept it fully. We understand the concept, but we actually don't accept it in our heart. Janana or manana. Is the difference knowing it or understanding it and actually accepting it in your heart so this is why we have to hear the same thing over and over and over and keep actually dwelling upon it deep in our heart thinking about it how many times have we actually thought deeply that everybody in this world is not mine Ek bharo so ek bal ek aas vishwas Tulsidas ji says you should have one attachment one shelter one goal one dependency all 
in him. Naradji says that giving up the emotional dependency on all others is ananyata, meaning just single-minded love and devotion. So how many times have we actually thought only he is mine, nobody else? We think he's also mine. But to think that deeply really does build surrender in your heart. It's a fact after all. Nobody in this world is going to be ours forever. They're ours temporarily in this life only. And that too only related to our physical body. But how many times have we thought that deeply in our whole entire life? More than a hundred times? Probably not. And how many times have we thought, this, this is my son, my son, my mother, my husband. How many times have we thought that? Thousands and millions of times. So we keep reinforcing that and we rarely think deeply about our relationship with God. And then when we sit to meditate, when we sit to do Rup Dhyan, we say, why, does my, why is it so hard for me to focus my mind on God? I try to think of God and my mind goes to the world or worldly things come in my mind. It's, shouldn't it be that way? I mean, it's only natural. We've conditioned our mind to be so attached in this world and have so much faith in this world. Why would our mind go towards God? As Sri Kripaluji Maharaj always said when he was asked, Maharaji, man ni lagta hai. Bhagawan me. Are lagega kyo? Lagana padega. O lag chuka hai sansar me. Ab waase hatakar lagana padega Bhagawan me. So that to make it start to deeply get attached to God, we have to deeply remember these main points that only He is mine. He is perfect happiness. I can get perfect happiness if I attain Him. The only desire of my soul is to be with Him. He's with me right now. How many times have we really faithfully thought that? So even a few times that we've thought it has had such an impact in our heart. Imagine if we really put effort every day to try to think about it repeatedly throughout the day. By the end of a month, how much progress would we have made? But it all starts with Tattva Gyan. So the Tattva Gyan we receive from the true Guru and then it's up to us to keep reviewing that information and try to make it go more deeply into our heart. This is the start of devotion. So more about uh, the benefit of Satsang of a true Guru is described in the next Doha. Jai Radhe Krishna Radhe 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 Krishna Radhe 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 Jai Radhe
Krishna Jaya Krishna Jaya Krishna Jaga Savi Mukha Hoya Jab Sancho Sad Guru Paya Radhe Radhe Karat satat sat sang tab Hari san mukha vajay radhe radhe Jai Radhe Krishna Radhe 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 Krishna 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 Radhe <clears throat> Veda Vyas Ji writes in the Bhagavatam the benefit of satsang when he says satam prasangan mam virya samvido bhavanti hrit karna rasayana katha tadjo shanada shvapavarga vartmani Shraddharatir Bhaktiranukramishyati. He says, through the satsang of a true saint, through the sang of a sat. See, sat, a lot of people, of course, it means truth, but a lot of times where it's used in our scriptures, it actually indicates for God and Guru. Here, satam. Sat, sat satam, mane sat ka. Sat ka prasang. Satam prasangat. So, sat ke sang se kya hota hai? Shraddha rati. Bhakti. 
in succession you get these three things. So here Sat means the true God-realized saint, the one who is joined with Sat also becomes Sat. God is Sat, he's Sat, Chit, Anand. So the saint also becomes Sat, that soul having attained God becomes Sat. So the true saint, when we do Sang, Sang means Do cheese ka mil jana. When two things touch, then they're doing sung, associating, you can say. So satsang is the divine association that we get with a true saint. What is it that has to associate with the saint? Do we have to go to the saint and touch our head to his feet? That's not true sung. True sang is man buddhi ka sang. Our mind has to join with the saint's mind. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means the same, same thing as when you join your mind with your doctor's mind. You join your mind with your mechanic's mind. In other words, when there's an expert in a field that you're not an expert in and you need advice in that field, you surrender your mind to that expert. Nowadays, who can fix their own car? Everything's computerized. A couple decades ago, many people had the knack of fixing their own engine or fixing things on their car. Nowadays, everybody takes it to the mechanic. Ham sab mechanic ki. We surrender our mind to the mechanic. We said, what do I know? Whatever you tell me, I'll do. Same thing with the doctor. I don't know, I have this pain in my body. Why is it hurting? Whatever the doctor tells us, we act accordingly. He says, here's your problem, here's the cure, follow this. So then, if we are truly surrendered to that doctor, we follow his treatment plan exactly. If we're not surrendered to the doctor, then we don't follow the treatment plan. But of course, if, uh, if the treatment's going to work, we have to follow it properly. So there has to be surrender. Our mind has to be joined with the doctor's mind. In this case, we want to be cured of our material ailments. We want to be cured of our mayic bondage. And we want to attain spiritual health. So to do that, we need a spiritual doctor, and that is the saint. So we have to join our mind with the saint's mind, and that simply means the tattva jnana he gives us, we have to imbibe that, think about it, and then practice sadhana bhakti, which is the cure, practice that as we've been instructed to do. That's doing satsang of the saint. I described to you earlier that we're all vimuk from God, we're all turned away from God. So to become sanmuk, you need the help of the Guru. None of us can become sanmuk on our own because the rest of our association is actually pulling us in the other direction. It's helping us to stay sanmuk to maya and vimuk from this world. So the three things Bhagwat says we get by associating with the true saint, Shraddha, Rati, and Bhakti. So Shraddha means faith in God, but more than that, hunger to find God. Then Rati is a desire to do devotion, a desire to practice sadhana. You can say Shraddha is like hunger and Rati is like Kani ki Cha. When you feel hungry, then you get a desire to eat, right? So when you have the desire for God, that hunger for God, then the desire to do devotion in order to attain God comes in the heart. That's rati. And then bhakti. Bhakti means when your mind starts to cross that threshold where it's getting enough attached to God through your sadhana bhakti, that it's more of a natural love for God that's developing in the mind now and you actually experience joy and pleasure in doing devotion to God. So this is the stage of bhav bhakti. 
All of this happens through the grace of the Guru, through the association of the Guru, or what we call Satsang. It can't happen otherwise, because other than the God-realized saint who's come into this world to try to awaken the souls and bring them towards God, who is going to bring us in that direction? Everything else is systematically bringing us in the other direction. Look at the association of everyone we know in this world. We're all doing the same thing. We're running after worldly happiness. And we have full faith of finding happiness in this world. This is normal in the world. So if one person turns away from that rat race and says, no, I think happiness is this way. Everybody else says, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Are you crazy? Everybody else is running this way. Why don't you run this way too? So could everybody else be crazy and only this one person going the other way actually be sane? No, 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 that couldn't be. So I'll also run with them. <laughs> so all the association we get through the people we know, media, movies, billboards, whatever it is, everybody's looking for happiness in the world. So why wouldn't we also continue to do that? And even if we read in some scripture that, okay, that's not real happiness, but it looks like real happiness and we keep hoping to find it and everybody else hopes to find it. And we have that feeling that it's always just out of my reach. I'm just about to get true happiness and we get slapped with another disappointment and we just think, oh no, no, okay, so I was disappointed again, but I'm just, I'm just going to get it tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> we keep that hope. So it's like a fly who gets inside your car and he, he sees that I can just fly straight out through the windshield. And he keeps trying. And he hits his head on the windshield again and again and again. Will that fly ever understand that there's an open window right here? He keeps trying to fly straight out. Doink, doink, doink. He'll keep hitting his head again and again. You have to actually take him, right? Take him and go out the side window. Then he'll go. Because he sees. I see with my own eyes, it's clear sky in front of me. He can't understand that there's a transparent, solid thing between him and <laughs> open sky. So I'm seeing it with my eyes. I can fly right here. Oh, what happened? Oh no, it's clear. I can go. Oh, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but he doesn't have the intelligence <laughs> to redirect himself. So this is what the Guru does for us. Us. The Guru has to come and we're just hitting our head against the windshield again and again because I see happiness is right here and he says, no, come this way. See? Oh, and then you fly out the open window. Of course, it's not that fast on the path of God realization. <laughs> it's a gradual process of becoming Sanmuk to God. So we need that help. This is the necessity of the Guru. A lot of people say, oh, what? It's between me and God. I can find God on my own. Why do I need the help of a Guru? That's why. Is anybody in this world going to tell you, no son, don't love me. I'm just a material personality. I may be your father. I may be your mother. But you should attach your mind to God. He's really yours. I'm just a temporary caretaker of your physical body. I have duties towards you, but love God, not me. Is there anyone in this world who's going to tell you that? <laughs> Would we tell that to anyone? No, we want everybody to love us, just like everybody else wants to be loved. So we all are We are all playing this game of trying to act like, if you love me, I can make you happy. We're not happy ourselves. We're not in possession of happiness, but we want to act like we can give happiness to another. And they also want us to believe that they can make us happy. So we're all playing this game. 
So we need the help of a strong personality to come in and explain it to us and be an example to us of someone who's in this world but is actually established in that divine state to help us gain confidence that this is something real we can attain. And then to keep reminding us and inspiring us to go in that direction. Only the true Guru can do that for us. Then we can become Sanmukh to this world. So this is what Sri Maharaji describes in this Doha number 13. Karata satata satsang. Satata means nirantar, unbroken, continuous satsang. Then you will get this effect from the Sancho, from the true Sadguru. In the next verse, Sri Maharaji again reiterates the point that love for God and detachment from the world will not happen on their own. They don't happen just through the grace of Guru or just through the grace of God. Aap unke bharose mein mat baitho ki ha, it'll just happen. Guruji is going to grace me. I don't have to do anything. Sri Maharaji says, no, you have to do sadhana. Only then this transformation will take place. So we'll sing now Doha number 14. Jai Radhe Krishna, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Krishna, Radhe. 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 Jai Radhe Jai Radhe Krishna Jai Krishna Jai Krishna Hari Anurag Virag Jag Apu hi Apu na ho Radhe Radhe मन ते भजन किए बिना भक्ति न पावे कोई राधे राधे
जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे I've heard people say to Shri Kripalu Ji Maharaj, Guru Ji, when you have your Kripa, then you will have your mind in the Lord. So Shri Maharaj Ji says that if any saint had the power to make a soul's mind become attached to God, or if God had that power, then why would, what's the need of having this world here? God could just think or the saint could just make sankalp that every soul's mind should become a hundred percent attached to God right now and every soul's mind would get attached to God. They'd all receive God's grace. They'd all be God realized and free from maya and then no need for srishti anymore. So if that was possible, don't you think they would have done it by now? uncountable saints have come in this world and spent their whole life making so much effort living amongst us. <laughs> Think about that. These saints who have their mind attached in God, they're enjoying divine bliss. And in spite of that, they're willing to come amongst us who are the very definition of ungrateful they come amongst us to help us and we insult them. What haven't we done to saints over history? Saints have been thrown in jail. Saints have been physically abused, verbally abused, run out of town. Would they go to all that trouble if they didn't need to? They're coming amongst us, giving speeches, writing books, answering our questions inspiring us to do devotion <laughs> what would be the need of even having scriptures all these scriptures trying to turn our mind towards God Vedas, Ramayan what's the need of any of that Guru and God could just think and it would happen so it doesn't work that way we have to do bhajan manate bhajan it's our mind we have to use it do rup dhyan through that attach our mind to God Guru is helping us God is helping us by providing all of these opportunities and this knowledge and this inspiration but in the end it's up to us to do it so for uncountable lifetimes now we've been sitting and waiting for them to grace us that when they grace then I'll receive bhakti that's the thing that comes at the end after we've done bhakti we have to do sadhana bhakti then we receive divine bhakti so we should never wait thinking someone else is going to do the work for us however much effort we put in to do rup dhyan if it's five minutes a day that's better than no minutes a day if it's one hour a day that's great three hours a day even better Whatever effort we put in, that much result we will get. Whatever effort we put in to try to remember that Shri Krishna is with us throughout the day, how much do we push ourselves to try to remember this, remind ourselves again and again, that's how much benefit we'll receive. God and Guru are already gracing. 
वन ऑफ द वेज श्री महाराज जी सर उनकी कृपा है हो चुकी है अब अपने आप पर कृपा करो यू हैव टू ग्रेस योर सेल्फ नाउ बाई डूइंग साधना देव डन वट एवर दे कैन नाउ इट्स इन आवर हैंड्स गोइंग फॉरवर्ड इन द दो हाज टू कम श्री महाराज जी एक्सप्लेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन ऑफ साधना भक्ति which is that one must not ask god for any worldly thing or even divine things such as liberation he says that a true devotee doesn't ask god for anything so how this works when we're such inherently selfish we're looking for our own happiness how can we become nishkam how can we become selfless in our devotion to god we'll discuss that tomorrow बोलिए अलबेली सरकार की जय